today's journey takes us back to beautiful and historic Woodland Cemetery in Dayton, Ohio. The history of this place beckons the explorer, and you can't help but feel right in the middle of history. We are here today to visit the final resting place of famed American poet and novelist Paul Lawrence Dunbar. Born June 27, 1872, his parents were actually enslaved before the Civil War. His mother Matilda moved Paul and his brothers to Dayton after being emancipated. His father Joshua had actually escaped from slavery, making it to Massachusetts and volunteering to serve for the 55th Massachusetts Infantry Regiment, which was one of the first two all-black units to serve in the war. As you can tell by his beginnings, Paul Lawrence Dunbar was already facing an enormous uphill battle and getting any sort of praise or mainstream notoriety. Not that he was even looking for that when he wrote his first poem at the age of six years old. The marriage between his parents was a troubled one, and Paul's father passed away when he was only 13. His mother played a big part in his education and learned to read for the sole purpose of teaching young Paul. She would read to him from the Bible in hopes that he would become a minister someday. Dunbar attended school at Central High School in Dayton and was the only African-American student there during his time. He was accepted and well thought of and was elected as president of his school's literary society. Orville Wright was a friend of his in school and the Wright brothers are buried just a few feet from him. We will visit them in a future video. Dunbar was editor of the school newspaper and a member of the school's debate team. When Dunbar reached age 16, some of his works would be published in the Herald a newspaper in Dayton. These works included poems, Our Martyred Soldiers and On the River. Dunbar took a job as an elevator operator because he could not afford to extend his education. The Wright brothers were approached by Dunbar because they had been in the newspaper business and he asked them to publish his poetry collection. They didn't have the means to do so, but they pointed him in the direction of the United Brethren Publishing House. He was able to get the book printed and quickly earned his initial investment back by selling copies to those he would meet while operating the elevator. The book would pick up some traction and eventually caught the attention of famed poet James Whitcomb Riley. I actually visited Riley's grave in Indianapolis and the video was on my channel. Wealthy people of the time began recognizing his gifts and even offered to pay for his education. He was very encouraged by the profits that he was making from his writing, so he continued to write. However, this was hard for him to sustain and he was having issues supporting both himself and his mother. His work, however, would maintain universal praise. He maintained a lifelong friendship with the Wright brothers and would meet and become associated with African-American leaders Frederick Douglass and Booker T. Washington. Paul Lawrence Dunbar would become more prolific and his work would become elevated to some of the highest publications in the land. He would begin writing novels in his later career. His works would become widely published, appearing in such publications as Harper's Weekly and the Saturday Evening Post. His success even led him to England for a literary tour. Now just think about that. This was before 1900. This man was only one generation removed from slavery. He would be active in civil rights and even appeared in the celebration of the memory of Frederick Douglass. Dunbar fell in love and married Alice Ruth Moore, a poet from New Orleans. Unfortunately, things would begin to take a downturn. Dunbar was diagnosed with tuberculosis in 1900. His doctors recommended that he start drinking whiskey to alleviate the symptoms and move to Colorado for a more favorable climate. Dunbar separated from his wife in 1902. This led him into a depression along with his declining health and he developed a dependence on alcohol. He moved back to Dayton in 1904 to be with his mother and Paul Lawrence Dunbar passed away on February 9th, 1906 at age 33. 
Unfortunately, Dunbar did have a rough ending to his life, but let's not forget his accomplishments and his legacy. He was the first African-American poet to gain nationwide distinction, appeared on a postage stamp in 1975. His home is now a state historical site and is included as a part of a national historical site, and numerous schools and other buildings bear his name. It's hard to imagine how far Dunbar could have went had his life not been cut short. It is an honor to feature him on my channel. All of my videos are cemetery related and another one will be on the screen soon. Please like and subscribe and join me. Links to my website and Patreon will be in the description. From Woodland Cemetery in Dayton, Ohio, I will see you again soon. Mm -hmm.